Hey, everybody. My name is Sam Brace. I am the Senior Director of Customer Education and Community, and you are about to watch and be part of the latest Dev Jams episode. So in this episode, we are going to be talking with John Riley. And John, he is a developer that's typically been doing lots of things in the open source space. He's tied to software engineering. He's done some great stuff for his overall brand, understanding what he's doing in the development space, sharing his learnings with people on his personal website. And what we're going to be talking about today is work that he's done with a platform called Docusaurus, which is a great way to be able to create sites, which is a React-based site generator. And a lot of companies are moving to it for showcasing their documentation and being able to build that in quick ways. But what he's been able to do is create a plugin with Rehype and be able to incorporate Cloudinary into his overall Docusaurus presence. So this is a way that he can start being able to deliver all the images through Cloudinary. So that way they're optimized. They're also delivered through the content delivery networks that we work with and many other amazing things. And John, of course, is one of many that we profile on this overall Dev Jams podcast, which is where we talk with developers who are doing inspiring, innovative, interesting things with overall development. And of course, probably tied to images and videos because they're gonna be using Cloudinary for those. That's why we're here. So joining me for this episode is Jen Brisman. She is a technical curriculum engineer at Cloudinary and a prize team member of my team. So Jen, welcome to have you to the program and talk a little bit with John. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> so Jen, talk to me about why you think this is going to be a good program. Tell me about why you're excited to talk to John today. I'm excited to talk to John because he's using Cloudinary in a, a pretty simple way, but it's a way that I found to be really creative and it's not one that I've seen very often. So I think this is an episode where it's not such a specific use case. So many people can watch this and take their learnings and apply it to what they're doing. So I think this will be a really helpful episode. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And this isn't the first time we've dived into Markdown and to Rehype yeah. and some of the concepts that we've covered and we'll cover in this episode. But it is to say there's a reason why we're covering it again, because Markdown continues to be an amazing thing for people to be able to do to be able to author HTML and be able to work with it in certain ways. Rehype is an excellent way to be able to start handling a lot of the processing parts of it. And Docusaurus seems to be one of the more interesting up and coming products that I'm seeing in the overall space because it does make publishing so lightweight. So it is to say that there's a lot of cool things that he's going to be doing in Cloudinary, as you're saying, ne not necessarily pushing the edges and boundaries of what our product can be doing. But it is making content authoring and content publication much more simple because I think with the techniques that John's showing, it's going to make it that much easier for people to really focus on the content and not mm -hmm. focus on necessarily optimizing every single thing in the manual way. Just set it, forget it, it's done, it makes it simple. Absolutely. Yeah, and he's really just um, hard coding in using Cloudinary um, as the domain. And, and I, I just hadn't seen that before. So I know I'll, I don't want to spoil anything. I know we'll get to it, but I'm, I'm really excited to welcome John to the episode. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so one thing to point out before we jump into our conversation with John, of course, is that this is not the first time that we are doing our Dev Jams podcast. In fact, we've been doing this for years now. And you can see all of the great content that we've put out with developers like John and many others at cloudinary.com slash podcast, as you can see on the screen here. So simply going through, you can go through all of the various archives of the content that Cloudinary provides in the podcast space. And if you want to continue discussions and meet with developers like John, who are active members in our Cloudinary community, well, you just pop on over to the Cloudinary community. And that's going to be at community.cloudinary.com for you to be part of all those discussions. So you can ask questions, get to meet new people that are probably dealing with similar things that you are, which is working with images and videos and digital media. So we recommend those two spaces. If this is starting to tickle your interest a little bit, some of the things that me and Jen are talking about today. So without further ado, unless, Jen, do you have anything else before I pop over to our friend John here? No, no. We, we, we've, we've been building it up so well. John, we're ready Perfect. for you. <laughs> Excellent. So John, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much. Hi. So, I'm John. John, good to see you. Good to see you. So, John, 
tell us a little bit about yourself. I mentioned open source, I mentioned software, I mentioned plugin development, but of course those are just little parts of the overall probably story that you have. So tell us a little bit about John. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, my name is John. I, I'm a software developer. Uh, I live in uh, in London. Um, I work for, for Investec, which is a South African bank. We do some pretty cool tech stuff. Um, and I, uh, I've worked in, in open source for like probably more, more than 10 years now, I'd say. Um, and a lot of what I've done has been like around uh, like the language TypeScript. Uh, I, I was a very like earlier adopter there. And um, like I've worked on a number of projects there that are particularly uh, have, have been have been useful as part of a TypeScript's journey, like definitely typed and, and TS Loader, which like brings together like Webpack and uh, TypeScript and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, one thing that I started doing also, like kind of around at the same time that I started um, uh, like open sourcing, was I started uh, blogging. And um, like originally, I started using um, uh, Blogspot, which was like I think Google was like a blog platform, which was which was out there and like it was super easy to use. And I used that quite happily for like many many years. Um, but actually, like, interestingly, probably influenced by some of the stuff that we've been doing at Investec, which was like we're a very infrastructure as code type place. Um, I, I was doing like infrastructure as code in like my day job. And my blog was still this like, um, uh, just like uh, HTML on someone else's website. And I was like, I should own my own content. And um, uh, so I, I had this, and also I'd, I'd really got into like liking Markdown, like the, the years of like down the open source minds, not that I, I, like I wrote like, like Markdown like a native, like better than I wrote anything else. And so it was just like, it was the obvious for me, for, way for me to write stuff. And um, so I started like reaching around, looking for, uh, for a way that I could uh, take, take, uh, take, take my stuff and, and move it like literally into code. And there was lots of things like around at that particular time that, that seemed to be like filling that gap. Um, and, uh, but the thing that was like most notable was, was Docusaurus, um, partly because like it, it, like it fitted like really well, um, but also because like, I, I looked at it, it's like, wait a minute, I've seen this before. Um, I've seen like lots and lots of Docusaurus sites like out there. Um, and you realize that just like tons and tons of like sites that you know and use, like um, I say Temporal uh, site, for instance, uh, they're built using Docusaurus because it's a very simple um, tool that allows you to build. Like, it was originally designed for the, for the purposes of documentation. It comes out of like Facebook out of Meta. Like it was built there as like an internal docs tool, but it kind of like evolved and became more. And the reason I got interested in was it because it has like a blog component to it and, and that mechanism just like works really, really well. So lots of people use it like for that as well. Um, so yeah, so I started using uh, like Docusaurus, and um, although like a personal rule for myself for like many years, I was like, I will not, I'll just focus on the things that I'm writing about. I won't like fiddle with the, the mechanism of writing it. Like I, I couldn't resist it, and uh, like I, <laughs> I've, I've, I've fiddled with with, with Docusaurus as it were. I've, I've contributed it like a like a number of things um, back to, uh, to back to Docusaurus, and I've written so the thing that we're going to talk about today, like plugins for Docusaurus, which are which are useful and I use like uh, on on my blog. When I think cool. it, it makes sense what you, what you, how you came to DocuSource based on what you're describing. And it also makes sense why you're using Blogspot probably at the very beginning. I feel like we've all gone through that journey where we started a blogger or we started a Blogspot or we started a WordPress or we started it. And then we find that maybe that worked, but maybe it's also where we found something that fits us more personally. And mm -hmm. as someone that is an open source contributor, to your point, like, if you have the ability to do pull requests and contribute to the growth of something, that seems to fit who John is, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes perfect sense why you would land on that as your platform for blogging and brand presence. And once again, very astute, you should own your own brand <laughs> because if suddenly Google or WordPress decides to take something up or down, then it doesn't matter because you still own your domain. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of wonderful aspects to what you just described there. Now, one thing I did want to ask you about with this, with DocuSaurus, was from a, from a developer side of things or a programming side of things, is there anything that really stood out to say, this is why I should use DocuSaurus? Because in my research of it, of course, it's React-based. As you mentioned, it was coming out of some of the work that was coming from Meta, which makes sense, because React did too. But mm -hmm. was there anything that kind of tickled your brain where you're saying, oh, that's why I should be looking at it, particularly other than just the open source nature of or the, the temporal usage that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, it's interesting you say that because, um, like, I was intentionally like not looking. Like, <laughs> I never planned to do any playing with it at all. Like, I was my plan was I want to use a thing that will just like allow me to write Markdown. That was my goal. Mm. I want to I want to write Markdown and I want it to be pretty. 
because I might I can't make things pretty. I don't have that in my wheelhouse. So I need something that will look good, like from default. And, and this 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 looked good, and it allowed me to write Markdown. And that was that, I mean, like the like the way that like the um, uh, that it was set up by default was like super straightforward. Like it's just text files on disk, like in folders. So, like, there's not much to it. like it. Technically, like it's probably someone who has like some like engineering smarts who's going to be using Docusaurus, but it really, really you don't need to like like vanilla like um, Docusaurus and just text files, and, and you're off to the races. You have a, a website that looks great, that looks presentable, that is easy to maintain. Um, uh, I, those are the things that I was looking for. It was kind of a surprise to me that uh, that um, that I, I ended up like digging into it and contributing like back to it. And I got to tell you, I mean, you, you can see on my screen, it looks great. It's if, if this is how if this is vanilla docusaurus or like you know, without a lot of work, it's Pretty clean, much. it's easy to read, it, and, and it, 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 if it makes publishing fantastic for you, then it's a fantastic tool. So I think this is really really nice, and you can see here your domain presence is for everybody in case they're like, oh wait, where do I go? Just to make sure we're, we're clear, everything we're going to be talking about is tied to your domain, which is johnnyriley.com. So if people are following along or if you want to see any of the posts, this is where everything's going to be based out of. All right, so, okay, so I'm looking at this. So we've chosen DocuSaurus. Markdown, that's something that would be good for us to unpack a little bit. So why was Markdown so important to you in the publishing process? Because obviously, in my opinion, as we've said, Markdown's an easy, fast way to be able to author content because of just the way that it works with HTML. It, it's based, and it also makes sure that, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons I like it is it makes sure that things are very modular. Because Markdown is here, it's the same Markdown there. So you can pick it up, move it, it's going to work. So if you ever decided to move things out of DocuSaurus for some reason, it's still Markdown. So it's a huge benefit to it. But what was the reasonings why you said, because of Markdown, this is why I chose DocuSaurus? Yeah, it's um, a good question. So I think it's slightly like two things. And like one of those things, one of those things is I just like Markdown. Like, yeah. like it's it's I, I, like, I, I like it I know it and it's and, and it's simple and like the the other thing is um uh I feel like it was like a Douglas Adams like quote or story or something like that like um that he was talking about like how like one of the things that like slowed him down in life was was like the the invention of the word process processor um because he like <laughs> like loved like um like technical things and um but previously he only had like a typewriter so he was hammered away on his on his typewriter and all he's got all he's got is like you know um like key presses and an ink on paper that's that's all he has like just just the keys that he can press but now he's got like a word processor and he's got all these, all these options in front of him he can have for he can have like line breaks he can have like which font do you use and what size font and maybe it'll be bold and maybe it'll be underlined and all these types of just options like you're blinded by options and options are actually Constraints are actually a really, really useful thing because they allow you to focus on on, on doing something. And um, Markdown is, is is constraints. Markdown, like you've got, like you can have text, you can have something like five or six types of headings, you can have bold, you can have uh, italic, um, you can have strike through, and like not much more to be honest. Like there's very little that you can do with that. And like a, like a personal rule, I uh, like I had around writing generally was that you want to remove all the things that like distract like from you. You want to um, just be able to focus on doing the thing that you're doing. And if you have like options, you're gonna explore those options. And you're actually gonna do the thing that you really wanted to do in the first place. So like Markdown is a, is a great way to make sure that you, that, that doesn't happen. Like you're working like just on doing the thing that, that you wanna do. And that will hopefully mean that you're, you're productive, right? You're actually writing a blog post rather than thinking about like the way that you could write a blog post and the CSS that you could apply to it and all of these things. Does that make sense? It does. It does make oh. sense. I mean, as somebody who has young parents, I'm always a big believer in limiting the amount of choices that I provide to my kids. <laughs> so like if I wanted them to choose between, let's say, a quesadilla or pizza, I'm only going to give them those two. But, but I give them like a whole menu, they become overwhelmed. It's, it's, mm. it's actually less than comforting. And yeah. then, of course, then no decisions are made. So I think to your point, like if you have a limited set of things that are possible, um, it allows you to focus on the tool and make it really, really good and focus on, as we said earlier, focus on the content, not the tool, not the tactics. So mm -hmm. I yeah. think it makes tons of sense why everything is aligning the way that it is. The story is making sense mm -hmm. to me, John. Let's yeah, not only is this a great metaphor for life, but this is also something that, John, you have in common with a lot of developers is 
um, go for the easiest, most simple way to do things. And it seems like that's the way that you found Docusaurus. And that might be part of the way that you found Cloudinary. Um, and that seems like uh, that's also the way that you like Markdown. Mm. So, John, I'm interested. So can, we've talked about Docusaurus, and I'm anticipating there's a world where now you've signed up, you've got everything running with your Docusaurus site. There is a, a period here, though, Cloudinary is not here yet. So how does Cloudinary yeah. get introduced? How does Cloudinary get be brought into this overall process? Yeah, um, so I'm definitely a fiddler. And um, so, <laughs> like, yeah, so I'm always like noodling around on, on, on something. And um, I really like optimizing stuff. Like I really like taking a thing and seeing if I make it like slightly better um, because then it's like better for everyone. And yeah. um, I had my my blog going and it was working, and it was fine. And lighthouse scores like was a possibility so like lighthouse scores for, for those that don't know it's uh, lighthouse is all this um i think it originally comes out of google it's certainly built into chrome and it allows you to like evaluate um like how your website uh, is doing along with various like metrics like it tells you how you're doing for like seo it tells you how you're doing for like accessibility it tells you how you're doing for like performance and like other things too that i, I can't always remember yeah awesome um, and I'd plugged a uh, light. I, I'd, I'd, I've been running my um, lighthouse against my blog, like here and there, and like looking at the numbers. And that's quite interesting. And I worked out a way to get um, lighthouse running on my blog every time I um, uh, I made a pull request. So actually, I should back up a little bit further. So my blog actually wasn't originally hosted on. Um, I mean, it was originally when I went to, to DocuSaurus, I was using GitHub Pages, which is like the built-in like hosting mechanism that exists on, on GitHub, and it's great. You get like this free website, basically, and I, I was using that initially, and I, I really liked it. Um, and then I became aware that like um, I would make a change, and um, I'd see that change like locally, but sometimes the, there might be a difference between like what it was like locally and when it was deployed. And I, I thought it would be nice to see what it was like deployed before it was deployed, if you see what I mean. Um, and their Netlify uh, were out there and to uh, offer various like jam stacky things. And they had uh, like uh, like a mechanism called deploy previews, I think. And I was, mm -hmm. For a while, yeah. I, I used that and I really liked it. And what, what happened with deploy previews was that um, every time you uh, every time you submitted a pull request, it would automatically generate a new version of your site and put a preview link in one of the comments. And you could click on that um, you could click on that preview link and you could see your site and you go, oh yeah, okay, it looks like that, it looks like this, works like this, uh, I'm happy or not. Uh, and then make a judgment call as to whether you're gonna like merge that pull request. And that was like just like a really, really like nice, nice thing. I like that a lot. Um, and like time went by and, but I didn't, I didn't like, I wasn't using Netlify to host my thing. I was using GitHub pages to, to do it. And, um, uh, and Net, I think Netlify was quite expensive. Um, so I landed on using uh, Azure Static Web Apps, um, which is an offering that, uh, that comes out of, of Microsoft and is kind of very similar to, to lots of the things that, that like Netlify do. It's basically a static web app. Sorry, I've just said that it's... <laughs> you're good, you're good. I'm <laughs> it, it, it's, it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? That, yeah. that's, that's what it is, and, it's, um, and, and, it, and it works really well. And um, I started using that, and one of the reasons I started using that was because, like, worked really well and I quite liked it but also it had like the equivalence to to Netlify deploy previews and I can never really remember the name I think it's called staging environments or something like that but it was, it's the same deal right you'd make you change uh, your code you raise a pull request um, and on that pull request automatically in the background um, a um, an environment boot will be created and blam you get the link you can click on it you can go look at it it's like great and now I've got uh, this, this mechanism that's working and it's working um, I'm hosting using static web apps and I'm doing a deploy previews using static web apps. Uh, so I've got, I've got these two things like in, like in tandem and with that in place that like it was like, well, now extra things are possible now that I've got that in place. Uh, and that's when I, I plugged um, like Lighthouse in there and I was immediately dismayed because the numbers were low um, for, um, uh, for, like, for my performance. I mean, I was good on like most of the scores, but the, the, the performance one, was, I was just like less good at. And um and th this got me thinking about like how can I how can I make those numbers better? Because every time you submit a pull request, you see the numbers, and it's like, oh, I want that to be less orange or less red. I want it to be closer to green. And uh, so yeah, I, that's 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 the thing that started me sort of like in the in the direction of um of like ways to tweak that. And like 
initially I was okay. I'm going to um, I'm going to like manually like uh, take each image and I'm going to optimize them, which was very very boring. Um, uh, but I did that for a while, and uh, and then I yeah you know, I got a mechanism for like making images like like someone will optimize. I scripted something which was which was quite good, um, but it was uh, it, I was also getting like you know I was getting improved scores, but like not amazing scores, and. Um, I, it then, it then occurred to me that the Cloudinary, which I had used in the past for like different things, was there. Oh no, it wasn't there. So um, uh, a friend, um, uh, Howard, uh, damn it, sorry, Howard Coffee, it's her name, uh, is behind uh, Azure Weekly, works for Engine, um, is okay. one of the founders of Engine. He was uh, telling us how they were using um, uh, they were using Cloudinary for, for their images for, for, their, for the for the uh, uh, for the Engine blog, I think, um, and that got me thinking. Oh wait a minute, that's I've, I've used I've used that before and for, for, for other stuff and I, I yeah I just got started reading up on it and uh, and the more I read about it um, uh, it was very obvious that there was a possibly very straightforward way to to plug into it um, uh, and well it felt like there was a possibility there which I which I dug into and, and that's what ended up with me um, like starting to use um, starting to use Cloudinary like for my blog I love it I love it and, and I think it makes perfect sense because. That is a main reason that people do come to Cloudinary, at least it's one of the main reasons, is that they're looking at ways to optimizing their website, making sure it's loading quickly. And sometimes that is tied to Lighthouse. Sometimes that's tied to Core Web Vitals, essentially indicators that are telling people this is how good the user experience is on your overall page. And by making sure that, yeah, you're, you're tweaking, you're trying to get things to go right. But it's also to make sure that when people are going to your blog and reading a post, they want to have an optimal experience. They don't want it where there's something slowly loading through because you decided to put a three megabyte image in there and you're not sure why the scores are low. So mm -hmm. it, it allows for that to take place. It, it absolutely makes sense to me. Yeah, I'll now, be on my I'll be on my phone like on on a bus or something sometimes, and and like go to my own site to check a thing that I'd like written. Oh mm -hmm. no! <laughs> right, and you know that experience. Oh yeah, everybody's had that experience. Really, you're suddenly surprised about the how it was beautiful on the desktop and everything loads so quickly on my amazingly fast internet. And then yeah, you're now out and about, and you're like. This is not optimal. So yeah. I, I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah. Completely. Uh, you did this. You did this. Uh -huh. It's your fault. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I totally know what you're saying. What did you? <laughs> so, okay. So we know the reasoning now. So you have this pain point that's happened. Mm. You're saying, okay, I want a better Lighthouse score. I want a better user experience is coming through. So you're seeing Cloudinary as a solution here. What I am very intrigued by is how you went about this because you created a plugin with rehype or for rehype or I'm not sure exactly the right way to phrase it, but essentially a rehype plugin that is going about the process and adding all of these to your Cloudinary account images that you're working with on your DocuSource side of things and making sure they're delivered with our CDNs that we work with and also applying some optimizations too. So how did you start the plugin process? Why, or even why did you start the plugin process this way? Sure. So the, the reason, like, why, like, I got the idea in the first place was because there's, like, Cloudia is like a ridiculously nice API for, like, uh, for, for doing this, which is, um, and you'll probably know the proper name. I, I, I don't. Maybe it's called the Fetch API or something like that. But like, which can, yep. But it's like, um, here's the thing: you've got like an image URL, um, and you can just like basically prefix your image URL with a like Cloudinary uh, CDN something uh, type like prefix. Oh, like that's it. You're done. It works. Like you, you uh, like when when you do that, you get um uh, like uh, like what happens is the request like snakes off to um uh, to, to Cloudinary and like behind the scenes Cloudinary is going to pick up the image from from your site. It's going to optimize it and serve it. And that first time, I'm guessing there's probably like some kind of like slowness because it's doing that 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 hit for the first time. Right. But after that, like you're off to the races. You've got this like optimized images going to all of your your clients, and it's just like it's just fast. And like the the simplicity of just like plugging that in. Was just like really, really attracted to me. So, like, because like I'd imagined, um, maybe Howard told me this is how it worked in the first place. I forget. Um, but the like, I'd imagined that if I was going to do something like this, what we probably need to do is going to have to, okay, I'm going to write some kind of script that 
crawls my my blog post, finds all the images. I'm going to have to like some kind of mechanism to upload the images to the thing, and then I'm going to have to go back through the the site and I have to change all the references. And I was like, that was yeah, I was open to that as an option, like incidentally. Um, but it was like um, it just turned out to be way simpler. I like didn't have to do that. Um, I can just instead like flip a URL and I'm done. Um, so the simplicity of like knowing that I could do that made me start like fiddling with like um, uh, like Docusaurus and looking into like like is it possible that, that I can do that? Because like um, I didn't I don't think I necessarily knew at that point how how that portion of Docusaurus like works. Um, like I knew that it, you 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 could put in mark down this side and out this side comes like HTML. I wasn't totally sure like like what was in between. Um, and like as as I had a little like read around and like and chatted to the uh, to the uh, the people who work on the project a bit. Um, like it turns out that it, it's it's kind of like this, and I might get this in the wrong order. I'll try not to. Um, Docusaurus takes um, Markdown and uh, it uses a mechanism called Remark plugins, mm -hmm. and uh, and that converts the uh, that, that takes the, the Markdown I think and converts. Sorry. It takes uh, the Markdown and converts it into into HTML, I think, and then well, uh, or JSX as well. And then you've got um, that, and you've got these two places, that, like the the remark step and the rehype step. And in both places, you've got the ability to like hook in. And DocuSource like allows, like it exposes those 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 hook points, as it were. And in fact, it uses those itself to to, to build itself. And so I exactly that. And so I was um, looking at this. Like, I was, like, so I've got this like remark like hook in place, and I've got this like rehype hook in place i wonder if i can can use this and um like the initial thought was like okay well maybe i'd maybe do it with like remark because that's where my images are and it's like like super simple to go with but actually it turned out that um that rehype was the uh, was the uh like the more obvious choice because that's like closer to the image um uh, generation point of view um because like don't want to jump too far ahead uh, so the way that the uh, you ended up handling like the images is that you would you end up with this. Um, I'm probably going to get into the code. Uh, you you end up with like walking through every like node um, inside the HTML. Every every like um, uh, tag, HTML tag, whatever it is that, that comes through. And some of those are like image tags, which are obviously images. Um, but some of those are are, are are JSX tags. And those JSX tags are like React things. And inside the JSX, you have to do a little bit of like parsing inside there to discover. Uh, like the image that sits inside the JSX, and you have to you have to swap it there as well as in the image things. So you've got like two places where you've got to do the um, the swapping, and um, because um, uh, because Docusaurus um, like it, it allows you to do uh, like Markdown, but also if you if you want to let it break out and do some like JSX, that's you're off to, you're fine. You can do that too. Like this mechanism made more sense in the context of like rehype because it would cater for for both. Uh, for both mechanisms, I think. So I think regardless of whether you're using um, Markdown or, or JSX, I think both of these things ends up uh, playing playing through that. Um. Which is fantastic. And I mean, the end result, you, as you can see here, so this is the title image of the post that went yeah. through this. And you can see some of the things that you talked about. Like if you look at the overall URL that was generated from Cloudinary, you can see it is using that FEF Fetch method, fetch method here, <laughs> yes. and what you would see, like let's say you just had uploaded this to your cloud near account, of course that would say upload in this case. So it's really tied to the overall delivery. So this is fetch delivery that we're showing you here. So mm -hmm. to your point, it has exists somewhere else, and then we're porting it through with fetch, so mm -hmm. that way then we're able to apply all the various transformations, and you can see exactly where it was coming from in the first place, which is from your domain, the assets images. This is your title and just be rerouted to Cloudinary, and then, of course, delivered through Cloudinary in this overall process. So, and this is all done through the magic of the plugin that you did, which is fantastic, because yeah. as, you, as we're big believers of, Jen can attest to this, we're big believers of you should set it and forget it, meaning that you should allow all the automation, all of the behind the scenes to do the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is doing that, where you, when you publish something to your overall presence via Docusaurus, it makes sure it's doing all of this work behind the scenes for you. So this is great to see. Yeah. Um, I think the image that you're looking at there, Sam, like if, that's a PNG, I think. And I think that one of the things that you get with Cloudinary, one of the things that I uh, quite liked about it was that it would take your, your PNG and it would turn it into something that was like more optimal for, for the clients. Um, like it may 
possibly even does it depending on the type of client. I'm not even sure. Uh, oh, but like, yeah, well, and, and, and very astute what you're showing here. Um, so let me see if I can show my screen on that real fast because you're, you're dead on. So what we are showing you here is I'm going to quickly bring over a little bit of a behind the scenes here. So you can see in this case, this is using what we call Cloudinary's Media Optimizer, or not about it, Inspector, Cloudinary Media Inspector. And it's just a quick Chrome tab that I can be able to click on. So I pull this up and it gives me all these details. And as you can see here, yes, you're, you're serving this as a PNG originally, where, where you're deliver, you're, this is a PNG originally. And Cloudinary is serving this as an AVIF which hmm. is an AVIF file, which is pretty cutting edge stuff. Um, but Chrome can deliver that. And the reason why that's happening is, of course, this little guy right here, F-Auto, which is indicating automatic format. So what it's saying is serve it through our server here. So you can see it's choosing Fastly in this case. Huh. So it's coming through the Fastly CDN. And in this situation, then, it's coming through as an AVIF. And if we just do a little bit of comparison ever before, I am 100% sure that our PNG originally is much larger than the 17.82 kilobytes that is being served as today, thanks to F-Auto. And as you can see, if someone knows Cloudinary transformations the way that me and Jen do, um, maybe not, but it is to say that there's no resizing happening. This is the original size of the image. You're not, okay. you're, you're not cropping it. You're not changing the width. You're not changing the height. So essentially, you're taking an original image, and you're mm -hmm. saying, all I'm doing is applying the F auto, the Q auto. There is a W auto that's here, so that's meant for resizing purposes in a responsive situation. Mm -hmm. But we're serving this image as is against my size, so it's just serving it as its original. There's no changes there. And same situation with DPR is going to be dependent there. But it is ultimately to say a lot of optimization is happening just with this transformation set you have. And then it's not even where you had to upload them all to a new location and do a migration. Everything's kept with your Johnny Riley um, overall space. Mm -hmm. So everything can still live within your domains and your overall path that you have of assets images there. So a lot of good things are add, happening right here behind the scenes. And just to add to something Sam said, the image is actually a smaller bite size, but it's not like made to be um, visually smaller. Right. Um, so yeah, it's optimized. But um, I have a question for you, John. So Basically, as we know, Cloudinary is going to fetch the image from the original source and serve it to you. And in this case, as we've just looked at, optimize. But I happen to know something about you, something that you've said in another blog, which is that you're more of a fetch guy. You, you are a self-proclaimed fetch guy. Um, so you like fetch. Um, so this is... Uh, you, you said this in a blog just about a month ago, uh, another blog about Cloudinary, where um, you were comparing to someone else's blog and you wanted to be able to do it with a fetch. Possibly, like, yeah, quite right? possibly. I, I, yeah, yeah, very, very possibly. Um, do you know which which post it was? Like, I've yeah, yeah, I do. Um, so it is. Um, let me find it here. It's um, uploading images to Cloudinary with Fetch. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, as recently. It was actually a while ago, but it was yes. in March, so a couple of years ago. This um, is, yes, yeah, so this you, was the, this was um because this is this is the, um. I get the name confused. Yeah, so this is the this was the first time that I used um, uh, Cloudinary, I think, for that one. Yeah, and um, that one, I gosh, it was man, some years ago actually. Uh, and yeah. with that one, I was using the Fetch API in the browser to upload. So yeah, it, it was um, I was using the Fetch API in the browser to, to do an uploads to um, and I, I think maybe even when I wrote that post, like the Fetch API was still felt relatively new or something. Like it hasn't been around for like forever, as it were. Uh, I do so yeah. So yeah. Prior to like Fetch, there was what the XML, HTTP, what's it um, thing, horrible. Okay. Uh, Fetch is just like a very nice API. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know if the if the Fetch in Cloudinary like has like a, a relationship to the Fetch in the browser APIs or not, or it, it may be that they are related things or, the, or they're different things, I don't know, with similar names. Well, the reason I ask is because yeah. um, we don't see ton, I mean, people use Cloudinary in various ways, but the mm. way that you're using it is very fetch specific. And when we get into the code mm. in, in just yeah. a moment, yeah. we'll see that you've hard coded in that it's a fetch and that's part of, so I was gonna ask, is part of the reason you chose Cloudinary because you wanted to be able to fetch the images or is that just like kind of the way you started using Cloudinary and that's how you've always thought of Cloudinary? Oh no, it's, it's more like, um, cause like I'd, um, I'd imagined when, when I was 
thinking about this in the first place, that I would probably be be using the fetch API in the browser to do uploads uh, like like to Cloudinary or have some kind of like script that would be doing it. Um, yeah. And but the thing that would the thing that would vaguely niggle slash worry me about that is like what if I fail to upload something like properly? And yeah. the idea of it not being my responsibility, I just hand it over to like Cloud and say, hey, you go you go find it for me. Like that meant yeah. that um like. I thought <laughs> I thought Cloud there would probably do a better job of that than I would necessarily. So I, I had like greater trust in it, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, interesting. All right, well, let's take a look at the code and see how you made this all work. Sure. Uh, shall I share my screen? Yeah, that'd be great. Absolutely. Cool, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. And let me know if I need to change sizes, and I will certainly do that. Sure. Uh, share screen. And we go. So, All right. Hopefully, you can see um, uh, see my screen here. And this is um, this here is the uh, where we my my yes. Yeah, so all all Docusaurus um, all Docusaurus sites have um, uh, like a Docusaurus config file, which is like just as the name suggests, the way that you configure it. And so we've started here inside um, uh, inside my blog. Um, and we're going and we're importing the the plugin that I ended up publishing uh, uh, to do this. Uh, in actual fact, if we look at the uh, like the website uh, itself, you'll see that um, it started out slightly differently. But shall I show you the code of the plug? So I, so I ended up publishing a plugin, but before I did that, I had this like an inline file that, that mm -hmm. sat like inside the blog post before I was like certain this is like a useful thing. And I've got like a one like that uh, in place right now. So this is a different uh, rehype plugin that I wrote that just lives like locally inside my blog. And a thing you can see that's significant about this, this uses um, uh, JS doc, which is like a, like TypeScript, but in, in the form of like um, uh, JavaScript uh, comments. And that's the code looks slightly different. So you'll see down at the bottom, we've got like a module exports. And um, you'll see that we're using um, these, these funky comment things, which have like types hidden inside them. But this is actually like vanilla JavaScript. And that's how the plugin started out. And if you look at the blog post um, that, um, that is associated with this, you'll see, if I tab over to this guy here, um, You'll see inside here that I'm like this is this is what I'm building here. This is like a JSX. This is um, uh, this is that. Uh, but when it came to um, to deciding that the thing that I'd written in the context uh, of a blog post um, was like okay, this is this is a useful thing. I flipped over and I decided to use um, to, to write a plugin and, and publish that plugin. So let me go back to here. And actually, let's do it inside uh, Chrome itself. So if I go to um, to the plugin here, and I'm definitely going to change the size on this because this is not going to be big enough for you. So it's plus that. There you go. And it's mega simple. It's like one file, um, like this this guy here. Actually, a couple of files. I exaggerate. Um, Index.ts. Like here's the root. Obviously, there's like not much in there. Not very exciting. Uh, by the way, is this big enough for you um, before I start talking? Yeah, absolutely. This looks great. Awesome. Um, cool. So the actual like guts of it, test, yay. Uh, inside the plugin here, um, we, we import a type, our, um, our image or JSX node data. Um, but the actual like guts of it is this. So this is what's called a transformer, a, um, a rehype um, a transformer. And this thing is, is exercised again and again um, uh, as as um, uh, as DocuSaurus like walks the tree of your of your nodes basically, right. and so this code here like like invokes uh, a cloud name, and this cloud name by the way is um, that's kind of like the name of your account um, yeah. on uh, on on uh, Cloudinary. So in my case, it's Pre, which has been my my uh, my, my mother in law's uh, maiden name, um, and um, for, for reasons and the base URL of, of, of your website. So in my case, that's uh, that's mm -hmm. Um And then every time it comes through, it exercises this this visit mechanism. For um for our little visitor down here, so you see we're creating, uh, we've got a visitor factory here, which with which we make our visitor, and then we invoke that visitor uh, on each of the the elements that comes through. And we're interested in like a subset of things being potentially transformed, so we want elements to be transformed, and that's like you know like an an image tag or um or or, or a paragraph tag or something like that. 
Um, obviously, we're interested, interested in transforming the um, uh, the images, but we'll, we'll we'll filter down to that later on. And JSX also. So these are the two things that we, we're going to play with. So now we get to the actual like where things like um, happen. So here's the um, this is the factory that we evoked above, and this is the thing that it makes, and it makes this visitor. So the visitor uh, is going to be hit like again and again and again with a different node each time, and um, it's going to look at that node and it's going to say, well, okay, if you're an element um, uh, and if you're an image and you've got some properties, then we're, we're kind of interested in, in doing something with you. Okay. So this is like, um, this is the equivalent of like, you know, a typical, you know, open curly, open uh, angle bracket. Is it? No. no. Uh, it's, it's an image tag. Um, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> I can never remember, you know, which one it you're is. You're good. You're good. Thank you. Um, so it looks at this, uh, this image tag that it's got. Uh, and it says, okay, uh, here's the uh, here's the the SRC, the, the the URL basically of the of the image, and we're going to take that, and you can see how simple like using like Cloudinary is here, because all I'm doing is I'm I'm literally hard coding here, uh, rescloudinary.com cloud name in my case preview on the spade name, um, uh, and here's the the transformations that are applied, and then the URL of the image itself. So this like it's just string concatenation, like it's it's no more than that, like it's way simple, and this is what happens for for image tags, and it's kind of the same thing that happens for JSX. It just looks a little bit nastier because JSX is a little bit more complicated. So if we step down here, uh, we're going to see the same thing happen, but um, uh, essentially, whereas we're dealing with a nice clean sort of like structure here, it's just like type elements, tag name, image, property source. Inside here, we end up with um, like a, a type of JSX and Inside here, you know, here's what, what the thing actually looks like. Uh, as you can see, there's like lots of things in there. So we end up doing a little bit of like um, regex um, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to work out like where the image is inside there. And if we find a match, then we, um, uh, we just uh, update. We do like, you know, node value replace. And we replace the, um, uh, the source thing that we've looked up with, again, the same thing here. So we've got the same thing that we're doing here down here, it's just a little bit like noisier because it's in the context of, uh, of JSX. But like, don't think about that too much. It's just string concatenation. That's all that's happening. And this, this is, is like, that's the end of the code, really. Thank yeah, you. Very, very eloquent. And I mean, it's very understandable what you're doing here because now you're bringing in the cloud name, which of course is your variable. You have your base URL, which is your variable. Everything else, Jen, to your point, you, you've hard coded in the resource type. You know, it's always going to be an image. You know, you're always going to be fetching it. You're always going to apply these transformations. So there's no reason for any of that to be variables in any way. Um, so it's a pretty sustainable process. I mean, unless for some reason we stop doing F auto, which I can't imagine a world where that happens, then this is absolutely um, future proof too. So this is great. Yeah. And it's like, it's been like, like zero maintenance for me in terms of like, like, so I, I, mean, I maintain like a, a whole host of like open source projects and many of them require like, like a fair amount of like ongoing maintenance to keep them like up and running. This thing, like I built it, uh, like I created it off the back of like Josh Goldberg's um, uh, template TypeScript like thing. So I didn't have to think about that too much. Um, and like, I kind of haven't changed it that much since. Like it's, it's just there, it just works. It's, it's really nice. Um, I mean, I've written some tests for it, which um, uh, just to like, you know, just so I, I felt better about myself, but like, um, <laughs> it's, um, I haven't done too much. I haven't done too much. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people do the same thing in a much more complicated way. So hats off to you for figuring out a really straightforward way to do this. So I wanted to ask you about, um, so as Sam said, you have hard coded an image. Um, have you tried, mm -hmm. um, any other, any other type, you know, video or, or are you really not using video on your blog? So it's not necessary. Um, so I, that's interesting. Um, so I actually, I didn't know that you, you did anything with, with video. Um, and I, I, I do have some videos on my site. So if you go to, if you go to my blog, you'll see like a yeah, small number of like talks that I've, uh, that I've done. Um, but there's not tons of them and they're all on YouTube. I don't know if that would have bearing on it. Um, and, um, yeah, but like, I, yeah, I don't do, I don't do tons with, with video at, at the moment. So yeah, not, not really. Um, Okay. But what do you do with video then? Like, um, like does it? Is there? Do you, do you have that, the equivalent of like a CDN for YouTube or? Um... This, is, this is a really fun. Yeah, I was gonna say Sam can go into it more, but the really short and fun answer to what do you do with video is pretty much everything we do with images. Uh, so yeah, that's okay. that's like a fun one sentence answer. 
You know, absolutely. And Jen's right about that. Like a good example is like those transformations that you're applying to mm. the images like F auto, Q auto, W auto. Those are all things we do for our overall videos too. So, oh. so as an example, let's say that you're serving something as a um, MP4, but we see that yeah. it would be better as a WebM based on what that happens to be. Oh, so sure. There, yeah, there's yeah. things like that. Same thing with the quality side. Um, mm. There's all sorts of fun things you, you can do, but oh. um, a good example of why it would make sense for, for actually for you to possibly use Gladiator here, and I'm sorry to point this out, John, um, is this <laughs> little guy here, this video unavailable watch on YouTube situation from the types oh, of yeah. London product because I have to physically click in and go to it. And if, if you were to say, oh, great, I always have it, you know, delivered from all the CDNs that Cloudinary uses. It can, it's reliable, it's dependable, it's using their video player. Um, yeah. It would prevent that from happening. Of course, you could always put a link in there saying, also watch it on YouTube because some people prefer that. Um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is to say it's something that's there. So anyway, a long story short, images and video are possible with Cloudinary cool. for sure. By the way, if there are any YouTubers like watching, I'm pretty sure that we're looking at like a bug on YouTube. Like when I was uh, embedding these things here, like I decided to use the like the, the privacy protecting option, which is like YouTube without cookies. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if, if you look at the, the source of the thing, it's like YouTube without cookies. But I, and I think if I use the YouTube with cookies, then like that that wouldn't happen. But I don't know. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, but but it is to say, no bothers me. Bothers me. But uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fine. So going back to the plugin. So yeah. now that we've seen the overall process that's taking place within the plugin, what I'd love to be able to walk through, if I can understand it correctly, is really mm -hmm. when it comes to the authoring and publication process. Because yeah. you're writing these blog posts, as we've mm -hmm. talked about, set it, forget it. What does that actually look like in practition? Yeah, sure. So um, probably the easiest way to do that is, remember back earlier on we were talking about um, like pull request previews. So if I write um, like a, a blog post, like that ends up being a pull request, and mm -hmm. um, so like in this case, I've just um, I've just raised a pull request with just like a like a like a marginal change, and I think I've tweaked the, the readme file or something like that. Um, but what you get off the back of that is um, is this thing here. And actually, before we dive off to that, let's have a quick look at what um, what the code for this looks like. So I, w I want you to see just how simple it is to like to author a blog using like Docatorus. It's just yeah. Way easy. So here's the the blog website um, in a blog folder, and you can see I've been blogging for quite a long time. Uh, but yeah, any one of these folders um, is um, like is a blog post, and uh, I thought I'd open up the one which is related to uh, uh, where is it? No, no, this one, Shh. this one. Hey, found it. Uh, oh, I did it on Boxing Day. Um, yeah. So this this is the blog post that we're that we're looking at um, uh, that I that I wrote in the first place, and all it is is this uh, this markdown file here. Um, this um, and there's a little uh, you get a little front matter thing at the uh, at the top. This thing here, um, which is just like has some like metadata basically around the blog post, author tags that kind of thing. Um, and you have the images that sit in the uh, in the same folder. So these things, oops, back. Okay, weird. Um, yeah, so these images sit alongside here and. Um, they're there and uh, and they work. Um, and when you do the uh, the pull request, uh, it spins up the version uh, of the websites for you and gives you a link, which I've got just here. And I happen to have opened this up like uh, previously. And if we go to this page here, you'll see here's my uh, my delightful <laughs> GUID featuring URL. But this is the the the, um, the preview uh, of the website and. This is the actual websites, and you see they look like identical, right? Yeah. But they're actually not the, exactly the same thing because this guy here, uh, the pull request preview, doesn't use Cloudinary. The actual website does use Cloudinary, mm. and the way that you can see that is is like mega simple. And I don't know how this is. Let's if if I need to zoom, then like do tell me. If I'm going to hit inspect um, on this particular image, and Let's see if I can make this big enough by this. I think you can do Command Plus inside here. Let's find out. Hey, so you can see. Um, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger too. Plus, plus. Oh, too big, too big. Uh, there's an art to this. I haven't quite learned it. Um, so here's um, here's our image. 
Um, yep. This is our little our title image there, hero image, if you like. Um, and a couple of things to notice about it, the most important one being the source. So like it's looking, it's using a local image, this thing here. You can see it comes from the from this domain, from the same domain that it's um, uh, as the website uh, lives on. And it's just this, this uh, PNG, not much to say about it. It's also like worth noting for just uh, any ways that it's got loading eager and fetch priority high. Those are just little cues that you can give to like um, uh, to the uh, to the browser so that it makes sure that it loads this image like fast, which gives you like, like better performance for like core web vitals and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But significantly, you've got um, you've got the the image here, and it's a local image. So if we now hold that in mind, and um, actually maybe hold the file size in mind, so it says it's like um, 28K there. I'm guessing that it's going to be slightly different when we go to the other one. Um, so if we go to here and do the same thing and do inspect. And again, let's see if I can. Oh, at least just remember where I am. That's delightful. Um, so now if we look at the, uh, the SRC um, attribute, you'll see it's slightly different, right? So right. the uh, the SLC attribute is um, it's got Cloudinary uh, prefixed in there and uh, and the uh, uh, my my mother-in-law's maiden name um, and uh, the, the various modifiers and behind that uh, the image and so it's not coming from my blog at all. This is coming from from Cloudinary and if you look at the um, the file size, it's uh, this is eighteen uh, k. So compared to the other one, I think it was like around. 28, 30 k, something like that. So, like, it's about like a like two thirds of the size. So you, you're you're getting benefit there uh, also. Um, so, yeah, there's kind of like dual benefit here. Like, one of which is like there's limitations like in the browser. Um, I think there may actually be like less uh, extreme these days. There's limitations in the browser, like the number of resources that you can get from a single website at a single time. Like it's um like it's bounded. Um, but you can go to other websites um, uh, at the same time, different domains, and you can you can get from them. And that's what we're doing here. But we're also getting um, the image in which is optimized, um, so it's going to be loading faster. And and I would also like given that like cloud and areas like Rose and Detra is like like images and also videos. It turns out um, like it's going to be fast, right? Like, um, so you're, you're going to get that, that perf gain too. So like, that's how it works. Like if you compare this to this, like the only difference is, um, the URL. Yeah. When, and I would think in terms of how this is also set up, let's say for some reason you're bringing over your markdown to a different spot and it's not going to pull from the cloudinary image. You always still have the base as a backup or essentially as a fallback yeah. mechanism too. So I think there's a lot of reassurance in using a plugin like this too. Um, oh yeah, like I really, I really liked um, like, because like, you know, when you're, you're adopting like anything new, you're like, you, you want to like cover your back just in case something yep. goes wrong. And like the idea that like, I could just turn it off and like, I could still, like it still works. Like um like that was really like reassuring to me. It wasn't like I was moving all my videos from here to here, and I was gonna have to like um like I was gonna have to do that on an ongoing basis, or to make sure the thing's synced up or anything like that. I don't have to do any of that. Like it just it works. And if for some reason like I decide I don't want to use this anymore or something, or like um I can just turn it off, and it will I will still have like a mechanism that works. It's just unplugging the plug in, I guess. And one thing that I want to unpackage also is, is the concept of open graph, because I've seen oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. open graph so well with your overall mm. site and Cloudinary is part of that too, because mm. the way that at least it seems to me that you're doing your open graph tags, as we can see here with like the way that Facebook and Twitter and other sites are interpreting it is mm -hmm. that whatever you're defining as like your header or hero image that you have for your blog post, it's yep. going to be associating that. But if we even take a look at like, there's a, this is just a generic open graph site that's interpreting this, so opengraph.xyz, mm. you'll see that with the meta tags that it's coming back with, saying this is how it's all working, you can see it's coming back with the cloudinary version right here with all of the optimizations that tied to it. So it is to say that this has lots of ancillary effects when you're not only authoring content and providing insight experience, but also when you're doing your promotions mm. and telling people that you wrote a new post or you're sharing it on Slack with coworkers or whatever it mm. happens to be. So there's a lot of benefits there too. Yeah, like I, I um, open graph was like this this mystery to me, like for the longest time. Like I, I started seeing like you know you, you paste a link somewhere, this this image would appear next to it, and I was like, what is that? How's that happening? It's some kind of some deep magic I don't understand. Um, and like obviously it wasn't magic. Like there was something behind it. It turned out to be this this thing called the open graph like protocol, which I ended up like like writing about. But like significantly, it was um, like it's just like these meta tags that sit inside um sit inside um like websites and mm -hmm. uh, and those things there like allow um like i think you, you've got a phrase uh, 
something browsers, mini browsers, something like oh, that. Oh, micro browsers. Micro, micro browsers. browsers. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, it's like micro browsers like like Slack and like um, mm -hmm. uh, Teams and uh, and all these other things. They can use this to like interrogate um, like the site, and they can use you to like to generate kind of like a preview of what's there, so that you don't have to. So people don't actually have to like do the like the immediate work of like clicking on something to go there to find out what's there. They've got like some kind of like some kind of clue that tells them like here's what's there and um, like Docusaurus had this built in like uh, already. So if I do again, like uh, let's do here, let me stop sharing so you can share that you're showing here. There you oh go. sure. Oh sorry, I didn't realize it. Okay, okay, so if I do um, uh, inspect here and if I roll up to the uh, to the header, so inside here you'll see um, we're interested in OG stuff. Um, I saw the Twitter card above. If you scroll back up. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So you see where. Oh Twitter yeah, there you go. Card. Yeah. yeah. So yep. And if I do OG image, there we go. So this um, this property here is the thing that drives like the, the image that pops up. And I think there's other like meta things to say. I guess so the description and the title and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wanted to use um, uh, I wanted to use the um, uh, the uh, the um, I, I I wanted to do those and uh, and, and so I did <laughs> those. <laughs> Sorry, lost coherence there. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> cool. No, but I, I, it makes sense. And, and also the way that you're replacing it, because now you're saying replace this image with one that's going to be fetched from yeah. Cloudinary. It also makes sure that that's working perfectly for the meta side of things too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an amazing example of how to weave it all together. And one thing that I'm really inspired by, by what you've done here, John, because as we said at the very beginning, you're an open source guy. Mm -hmm. And if I go into your GitHub repos, I can literally see every single blog post, all the markdown, it's there. So if I want to do a pull request on your blog, I can. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. So it, it's, it's back to like, you know, you're picking up what you're putting down. You're, you're practicing what you preach. So, John, that's fantastic. Oh, thank you. And another thing is, you know, you've made this Rehype Cloudinary Docusaurus plugin and it's on npm so anyone can find this mm -hmm. um so if you if you have the latest version of npm you can just install it it's that easy like that that concept will never not blow my mind but um you know part of being an open source developer like you are is you've shared this so you've weaved this all together we've just discussed it in this episode and now you've let other people use this too so you're really you're really doing the good work there john oh, <laughs> everyone everyone should be very grateful and i know i am Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and to back up everything that we just said here, of course, you can always just go to your GitHub. So that's going to be github.com slash Johnny Riley, same as the domain. And you can access all of this stuff, including the Rehype plugin, and start using it on your DocuSaurus side of things. So if you are using DocuSaurus, if you're investigating Rehype, if you like Markdown, there's a lot of things that you can ultimately apply for this because it's not necessarily where the things that you've done here have to only work for DocuSaurus. It's just, it's meant for DocuSource purposes. There's a lot of learnings that work for other things too, mm -hmm. if it's Markdown based or Rehype based in some way. So this is exciting. This is really, really exciting. So John, final takeaways, anything else that you, we've talked about with the project that we maybe neglected or didn't talk about or anything you just want to summarize it in a nice tidy way? Um, what, what, what do you got for us? Um, there was, yeah, just that there's a few like, um, like, Things that are worth plugging in, like as well, when you're using this, like those, like uh, it's called pre-connect, like li little like browser cues in there that you can do, and like that lets like the browser know that your your stuff is uh, uh, like um you should you should go off and you should start fetching this stuff from like from Cloudinary like like faster than you would otherwise do. Like these these kind of things can like make a slight difference to like to like speed things up as well. Um, but yeah, like it, like anyone who wants to like play with this, like I'd, I'd recommend like like just having a go because it's it's like it's mega easy to to use and there's like there's no commitment to it either. Like if you, if you don't like it, you can unplug it. It's um it, it's really and it, it's it's an easy on ramp and it's an easy off ramp, which is like I think anything that um uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm attracted to things that have easy easy on ramps and easy off ramps. It's about, you TypeScript actually back when I was like using it for the first time, like one of the attractions was that it was very easy to get started and also you could say hey we. Just JavaScript, we could fail, um, and <laughs> and that that was the thing that would get people over the line. Yeah, okay, I'll I'll, I'll try it because we could escape. We could escape. Be fine. Um, yeah. 
I love it. I love it so much. And so, of course, to plug your blog post, of course, everything we've covered here plus more is going to be found on your blog. So people hopefully, if, if they take the time to read it, they come to check out all the work you've done at Docusaurus. And of course, as we mentioned, that's going to be at johnnyreilly.com. Mm -hmm. So, John, this has been fantastic. So thank you for being a part of the program. And we hope to see more of what you're doing, maybe some video. So that'll be exciting. <laughs> 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 Thank you again. Thank Cheers. You Thanks a lot. So Jen, key takeaways. What do you feel here? We covered a ton here, but what, what's standing out for you? Yeah. I mean, there's so much. One of the main things is how helpful developers are to other developers. You know, like no, John didn't have somebody asking him to do this and he didn't have, you know, some company or some boss saying like, hey, you really need to optimize your site. He wanted to get that better Lighthouse score. He wanted to optimize. And even you could see at, during the podcast when something wasn't working, he said, oh, that bothers me. That bothers me about, about the YouTube potential bug. And it's really, you know, a lot of the reasons people come to Cloudinary is because they just want to make things better. And and I don't know, I'm, I'm just inspired. And, and the reason he made this plugin and shared it with other people to use is because he wants to make their lives easier. He tinkered, he figured it out and he's giving everyone a solution. So it's kind of like a feel good episode for me, for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, lots of other, lots of other takeaways. Another big one for me is um, you only know what you know, right? right? So in this case, John didn't happen to know as, as you know, anybody doesn't know everything about what a, a product can offer. He didn't happen to know that we work with video, but through coming on this podcast, he found that out. Maybe he'll use that. And in the same way that through writing his blog, um, we had um, Rebecca Peltz reach out and let him know about F Auto Q Auto. Now he's using that. And that was a big thing we talked about in this blog, which we were already interested in before he was applying F Auto Q Auto. So I think, I mean, there's so many good takeaways. How about you, Sam? I, I, I'm just going to echo it. it. It makes sense. It, it, yeah. <laughs> so you said a ton of stuff here. I agree with all of it. Um, yeah. And I, I think that this has been an amazing episode for someone yeah. that is trying to create a true experience for their overall brand in a lightweight way, especially if you're migrating from some of the sources that we've mentioned at the very beginning of the program, like Blogger or other blogging software. It's a great place to be at. And as we show, Docusaurus is becoming a very, very widely used tool, um, or at least it's widely used within certain spheres. Um, so I'm excited to see if this it helps with overall adoption, with the great work that John's doing to help people to be able to see the power of all of these platforms together when it comes to content authoring and delivery. So that's exciting. Yeah, agreed. So to summarize all of this, if you want to be part of more of these podcasts that we are showing you here, of course, they're all going to be at cloudinary.com slash podcasts. That's where you can see all previous episodes of Dev Jams. And the nice thing, of course, is that if you are a Spotify person or you're an Apple podcast person or Google, you can see all the previous episodes there. And we have them all linked inside of that case. And of course, all the transcripts, all the details are happening to be right there as well. So you can follow along at your leisure. And don't forget, we also have an amazing community at community.cladinary.com. And that's where you can be a part of all the conversations that are taking place in our overall community. And if you're also a Discord person, great. We also have an associate Discord server for you to continue the conversations as well. And lastly, to help John plug his stuff, go ahead and check out Docusaurus. That's going to be at docusaurus.io. And of course, John's personal blog post with lots of great material, not just about Cloudinary, but about many things at johnnyreilly.com. So on behalf of everybody at Cloudinary, so from me and Jen to you, thank you for being a part of this Dev Jams episode, and we can't wait to see you at future ones. So take care and have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon.